beautiful Saturday. Um, we got Mr. Nightmare, man. Um, make sure I give you a thumbs up and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Um, got more video coming for y'all too. You feel me? Happy Saturday, and let's go ahead and get started with this motherfucker video. <clears throat> Everybody hey. This happened when I was a young child, maybe like eight years old. My parents had me late. My two older siblings are both at least ten years older than me. I was woken up in the middle of the night to a commotion from downstairs one night. It was my parents. I cracked my door open and heard my parents freaking out about something. I wasn't sure what it was. I went to the stairway and stood at the top, calling down mom, dad. My mom came to the bottom of the stairs and said to me, go back to bed. I listened without asking any questions. I could tell they were stressed about something though. I was trying to go back to sleep when I heard the front door downstairs slam shut and then it was dead silence. I presumed they left the house, but I wasn't sure why. Either way, I listened to my mom and went back to sleep. I woke up again to sounds downstairs once more. It was the sound of the front door closing, and then footsteps, but no talking. Naturally, I assumed they were back home and just being quiet so that they wouldn't wake me up. I heard occasional steps and thuds from downstairs. I heard drawers and cabinets being opened and closed, and I thought for sure I heard the fridge opening too. I thought it was my older brother Chris, who was 10 years older than me, and at the time he was already driving, so he was going out and coming home late. So him getting home at like 2 a.m. and rummaging the fridge wasn't abnormal at all. These are all things I was telling myself, logical explanations as to what I was hearing. Eventually, I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, getting louder and closer until they reached the top and then made their way first thing to my door. My door quietly and slowly opened. I didn't sit up or move. I just had my eyes open facing the door as I was still laying down. There weren't any lights on outside of my room. Whoever was walking around was doing so in the dark. You ain't so all I saw was this black Listen. mass in my doorway, Listen. resembling the shape of someone's head. I said every name, starting from Chris to Mom to Dad. Then I just said, who's there? They didn't reply. They just closed the door, and I was left there confused, but mildly creeped out. I heard footsteps going downstairs. I was convinced it was my dad now, just coming to check on me after getting home though I wasn't sure why he was ignoring me. I didn't hear anything from downstairs for a while now. I allowed curiosity to get the better of me, and I went downstairs in the dark. I kept all the lights off as I was approaching the kitchen, and I froze at the doorway, noticing a tall figure standing right in the middle of the kitchen. What? I said, Dad? Assuming it was him just based off the size of this person. A deep voice said, Go back up. There's. I ran back. And let me guess, your dumb ass ran back off there. No one ain't your dad. Up the stairs to my room and closed the door and jumped under the covers. All I was thinking was, why did my dad's voice sound like that? Wait, why did that sound? A stranger being in the house didn't dawn on my innocent little mind. Not until a little later, when I heard the front door opening and a commotion from downstairs again. The voices of my parents. I went to the top of the stairway again, and they were shocked to see I was still awake. I asked what happened. They told me that Chris had a little accident, but that he was going to be fine. I found out months later that he had gotten into a car accident driving in a condition that he shouldn't have been driving in. My parents got a call from the hospital, and so they rushed to see him first thing, leaving me to sleep. I asked my dad if he had come in my room before. And that was when I learned that they had been gone for hours. My mom started freaking out, yelling at my dad because he had neglected to lock the door when they rushed out of the house. Me Get telling my parents about the person at my bedroom door and in the kitchen caused my dad to search the house. If he had a wreck while he was drunk, why you just didn't take the boy? That's dumb. That's her mercy. With his gun and my mom to call the police. The last thing I really remember was being asked by a police officer to give my story. My parents told me that they felt like morons having to explain to the cops that they left me alone and left the door unlocked. A bit. I don't think anything of value was stolen, even though whoever broke into the house clearly didn't have intentions of harming me. 
Having a complete stranger in your house is already a terrifying ordeal. Now, imagine going through that at eight years old. Eight is fucking crazy. Your mom, your mom was dead ass wrong. Dead ass wrong. It was around 2013 to 2014. My brother was about seven or eight at the time, and we had just moved into a new house to be closer to school and for cheaper rents. It was a pretty nice house, all things considered. It even had a cozy fireplace for the winter. Anyway, my brother was really into Batman and had this Batman car that if a button was pressed made noises and lit up. It was basically his favorite toy, so he played with it often. Batman. Then one afternoon, he came inside from playing out back and told us he found something. So obviously my mom and I asked what it was. It was a picture of a young boy in the form of one of those tags you get if your parents paid extra for school photos. The picture was dirty and full of wear and tear, even to the point you couldn't see the year it was taken. We thought that, okay, some parent lost their kid's picture, no big deal. And then my brother said something that confused me. That's Buddy, he said. And I looked at him with a facial expression that basically asked him to repeat himself. And he did. He pointed at the picture and said, this is Buddy, he's my friend. I slowly nodded my head as if I knew who he was talking about. The main reason this confused me is because my brother didn't make friends easily, and he had no friends that I knew of. And this buddy only came up once we had moved. I shrugged it off and figured he made friends with the next door neighbors or something, and he somehow got the school picture as like a keepsake. That night around 3 a.m., when everyone in the house was asleep, I woke up to my brother talking, so naturally annoyed. I walked into his room to tell him to go to bed or else he'd wake up our parents. It was weird because when I walked into his room, he was sitting up straight in his bed as if he was actually talking to someone and not just to himself or his toys. The little boy talking to ghost or he talking to somebody in that goddamn room? And I hope it's ghost. I told him to go to bed and I went to bed myself. A couple days later, my mom was talking to me about my brother and asked if I'd seen him get up at night. And I said, no, I woke up to him talking a few nights ago, but that was it, why? And she said he had been acting weird, but as usual, we both shrugged it off as him being a kid. Now in my room, my bed was right across from my door, meaning if I turned over, I could see into the hallway right in front of me. One night, I woke up to use the bathroom, and since I myself was and still am very afraid of the dark, I left the hallway light on, knowing my dad would turn it off once he got up and I'd probably be asleep by then. I was laying in my bed facing my door, when a sudden noise made me jump. It was my brother's damn Batman car, who was making noises. So I got up to tell my brother that he shouldn't be up this late playing, but when I got into his room, he was asleep in his bed with a toy across the room on the floor still making noise. I walked over to it to turn it off. I was finally able to go back to sleep. But the following days, my brother would not shut up about Buddy. It was honestly starting to freak me out, so I went over to the neighbor's houses to the right and left of us. One house didn't even have kids. Damn. The other was vacant. Damn. This started to worry me, but my dad said it was probably just an imaginary friend he came up with. I went along with it since I couldn't think of any other solution. But almost every night, one of us, my mom, dad, or sister, would say we heard my brother's toy making noise and had to go into the room and turn it off. I explained that I had to do it as well and once again brought up my brother talking to someone one night. My dad swore up and down that the toy was probably motion yeah, activated, but when we bought it, there was no advertisement for motion activation. My sister and I were so unnerved by it that we started to sleep in my room together, which I'm glad we did or else I'd probably write this off as a bad dream. My sister and I were talking, trying to keep each other calm and in good spirits, until we heard the dreaded noise of my brother's toy. We both looked toward my open door and into my brother's room, which was right across mine into his room. Our expressions turned into those of horror, as we saw our brother's toy rolling past the door, all on its own. We screamed and ran to our parents' room, and they got mad at our brother, saying it was a cruel joke to play on us. As we were already freaked out, what he said sent chills down my spine. It wasn't me. Buddy wanted to play. That night, the toy went into the trash. Batteries taken out and all. My sister and I were relieved until the next day. My brother had the toy again. My parents accused him of getting it out of the trash, to which he responded, Buddy got it for me. The toy was broken into small pieces and thrown away for the final time. 
My brother was obviously upset, but our parents got him a new Batman figurine and everything was fine. It wasn't until about a week later, when we all felt that everything was okay now, and that buddy was gone. My mom was cooking chicken breasts on the countertop George Foreman grill, and she had come into the living room to ask us something. And then we all jumped as we heard a crash in the kitchen. We went in there to see the George Foreman grill halfway across the kitchen, as if it had been thrown. My mom swore it was nowhere near... They gotta go. Start the down The edge. And my dad had no explanations. Nothing happened afterwards, and we moved out about a year later. Bitch, I would've day, moved out a month later. My brother's imaginary friend Buddy wasn't imaginary. That nigga would've had to go to an asylum or something. Fuck the dumb shit. <laughs> when I was just 10, we moved to a new house in a different town. I was entering a new elementary school as a fifth grader, which is only- I ain't gonna lie, when I was 10, I fool, I was bad as hell, I ain't gonna lie. Nigga, I was a thuggin', nigga. My mom had two jobs, nigga. Nigga, I was out thuggin'. <laughs> oh, my God. My mom was out thuggin' when I was 10, like, 9, 10, 11, but I was thuggin'. Tough. No cap. Starting out, it was a bit awkward, as all the kids already knew each other, as I was just some random kid entering the scene. In my elementary school, you were made to sit with the kids from your class during lunch. I remember it being really awkward the first few days at school. Yeah. Kids are extremely judgmental around that age. And I was judged as the new kid, so it made making new friends more difficult. But those initial things of being the new kid on the block, I actually met a few of the- I don't care, I moved from one city to another city too. Nobody didn't know me shit. Not everybody know me. <laughs> Cause it really don't take me long to make friends, you feel me? Be honest with you. If you know me, you know, you feel me? Kids on the block. One of the kids was Dan, who went to a private school, so we went to different schools. We met while I was biking down the street, and he asked if I had just moved into the house on the corner. We started hanging out from there. Then, a few days later, I met Alex. Alex actually rang the bell one day and asked my parents for me. I was confused when my parents called me to the door and introduced me to him. He said he lived down the block and wanted to know if I liked video games. Of course, I said yes, and he invited me over to his house to play Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Damn it, that I didn't have that game, but I really wanted it, so I said yeah. Man, nigga, I had that game. Swear to God, God can strike me down right now, nigga. I had that game literally 12 times, 13, 14. It's up there. I done had that game so many times. I got it now on my Xbox. I'm replaying. As a matter of fact, I'm replaying the story right now because I, I had went back on all the Grand Theft Auto. I know. I beat Grand Theft Auto Photo the other, uh, like three weeks ago. When I be free and shit, I be playing the game. But yeah, goddamn, I had San Andreas so many times, bro. And the worst mission I hate on that motherfucker. All you had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. I hate that fucking mission. Cause every time. We walked to his house, which was literally the corner house at the opposite end of the block. Right away, I felt like the house looked less nice than every other house on the block. It was the same size as most, but it just looked run down and not taken care of. There was no grass. The front yard was just two big patches of dirt with a walkway cutting through them to the front door. We entered the house, and it was equally disheveled inside. It was like a house of hoarders. Boxes and junk everywhere in every room. He led us to the basement, which smelled like 15 cats lived down there. Damn! Weirdly enough, there didn't seem to be any pets. The basement was a pigsty. It may have been the messiest room in the house. We sat on this brown leather couch placed right in front of the TV. He had a GameCube and PS2. He booted up San Andreas and we played the two-player mode. And it was actually fun, and in that moment, I thought I was going to like Alex and would want to be friends with him. Eventually, I wanted to go home, and so I said I gotta go, and he seemed really disappointed, like he wanted to keep hanging out. We'd already been playing for like two hours, though, so I just wanted to go home. He followed me halfway home until I said, see you later, basically saying in a friendly way, all right, go away now. That was the first warning sign that Alex was a wacko, but I didn't find it concerning just yet. The next day, 
Alex rang the doorbell again and asked my parents if I could come play. This time we played GameCube in my room for about an hour. God damn, nigga, you not ain't got no other friends. Mental, but I was starting to not really oh, like him just me. because I felt like he was weird and he made me uncomfortable with how physically close he got to me. The next day after school, he rang the bell again. I wasn't really in the mood and told my mom to tell him I don't feel good, so he left. I would rather hang out with Dan, honestly, because I just liked him more. That same day, I rode my bike up to Dan's house to see if he could hang out. He was down, so we started riding our bikes further up the block. And this was a mistake, because as we passed Alex's house, he came outside onto his front stoop as if he were waiting by the window. It was weird, but it... We'll track the price of your flight, so you can decide when to book. Oh, you got down my ass, man. It's also awkward, because I just had my mom tell him that I was sick before. As we passed, I told Dan that I hung out with that kid, and that I felt like he was slightly weird. That's what you get for lying. <laughs> and he came out. He a weirdo. I wonder what he doing today. I, I bet he a lying. Dan was shocked that I hung out with him, saying that whole family is crazy. I found out from Dan that Alex was actually a couple years older than me. He was 12. From this point, I decided to steer clear of him. The next weekend, Alex came to our door again asking for me. Hey, I told my mom before this already to tell him I'm not home if he came back. So she did that. Nigga, what? But late that night, I woke up to my window completely open and a cool breeze blowing me into the room. Mm -hmm. It was a chilly September night, so I most definitely left the window closed originally. Waking up to an unexpected breeze made me question who could have done that. Who's then done? I felt something poke my foot and I screamed. I looked at the foot of my bed and saw Alex. He told me to be quiet, it's just him. Before I could even ask what he was doing in my room, he explained that his parents were fighting and he wanted to sleep with me. Nigga! He climbed through my window. I was in shock. I told him to get out. He pleaded with me to let him sleep in bed with me. Again, I told him to get out. Watching him turn and climb out of my window was a disturbing scene. I closed the window and locked it, and then went straight to my parents to wake them up and tell them. They couldn't believe it. The next day, my parents both went down the block to talk to Alex. I would have beat that bro. I would have beat bro ass. You hear me? Me ten year old. I'm looking at me myself as a ten year old when I was ten. I was much, I was much ruthless. I under did calm me. I, back then, bro, I was I was reckless. I don't care. Parents. And when they came back, they said it didn't go well. Not gonna lie. Alex's crazy mom I screamed and laughed at my parents' faces, taking no accountability for her son's actions. I'm sure my parents didn't want to get police involved because Alex was just a kid. But however many nights later, I woke up to knocks at my window. Bro, you would. I had my blinds closed, but I knew for a fact it was Alex. I didn't answer. The knocks went on and on for like five minutes. I even heard an attempt at opening the I was actually scared. I remember my heart racing. Eventually, of course, the knock stopped. I went to tell my parents, and they told me to just ignore it. I think they weren't as threatened because, like I said before, Alex was just a kid. It was probably a few days later when Dan and I, along with another kid I made friends with from school, were biking from my house oh, down the block. The out of when we passed Alex's house, I saw him run to the window as we passed, and he just watched. I told my friends about what happened, and they found it hilarious and fucked up. My other friend made a comment about how he sounds like someone who would live in a gross house like that. <laughs> that night, for the final time, I woke up to a sound in my room. It was the sound of my window being shattered. I screamed like a girl as I saw Alex climbing through the window, through the closed blinds. I ran to my parents' room and woke them up. By this point, Alex was already back outside. Who has that blow My dad went outside and chased him all the way back to his house, with Alex making it back inside his house before my dad could catch up to him. My dad pounded on the door until Alex's parents opened up. My dad must have said something right. Because he somehow managed to convince Alex's parents to pay for the window if he didn't involve the police. They ended up paying whatever it cost to fix the window, and I never heard from Alex again. Though I did see him once or twice in front of his house the next couple of years while in the car passing his house. 
That family eventually ended up moving somewhere else, thankfully. I think there's a chance Alex was looking to do something crazy, like murder me, or at the very least attack me, just because he saw me hanging with other kids when I didn't want to be his friend. Tell the nigga get- I mean, what else would he do after shattering my window with something and climbing inside? I'm scared to wonder what kind of person Alex grew up to be. I can tell you right now, Alex is locked up right now. I can tell you that right now. I bet you Alex locked up. Being the pervert. I probably killed somebody. I mean, uh, unalive somebody. But anyway, give me your thumbs up, like, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, see you on the next video. See you when I see y'all. Let's ride, nigga. <laughs>